once again I'm going to cook a traditional dish from the part of the country where I live. This particular dish we call Teti Pot. Teti Pot is short for Teti Pot which is short for Potato Pot. So what, I, what, what we're going to make is a corned beef Teti Pot. Ingredients are very simple. Onions, carrots, corned beef and potatoes. First thing we'll do is cut up the onion Once again I'm wearing gloves because I've been at work all day I do wear gloves at work but my hands are often not the cleanest Plus I've got one or two little nicks and wounds and I don't like onion juice in me little cuts and wounds because it hurts. Now we'll peel the onion. Just get rid of that. Right, onion needs to be roughly chopped. So I cut them in half, cut them that way, cut it that way. Once again. We need to peel and slice some carrots. Anybody that watches AVA's channel, if you watched them last week, he used his lathe to peel some potatoes. Potatoes are the wrong shape to peel in the lathe. A carrot is a much more, it's a better shape because it's round. One good thing with a carrot is it's already got the centre marked for you. So we'll simply insert it on the mandrel. Look at the burst the bastard open. We may have to drill the carrot first to allow it to fit onto the mandrel. I've got some long series drills here. This drill is actually 15 thou smaller than the mandrel, so it should. The adjacent interference fits. Just drilling this by eye because I can eyeball within. And get things pretty close by eye. So you get started on centre. Then the two holes are meeting, I can feel them meeting in the centre. Turret's a nice fit on there. With the mandrel sticking out so far, what I can use, I've got a, a centre that's different to an ordinary centre, and something that I'm having a point on, it's concave. Concave like that, so it will locate quite nicely onto the end of the mandrel and stop it from flexing. I'm going to make sure you don't put too much weight on the centre, just enough to support it. And that's running fairly true. I'm not quite sure what sort of speed you use to machine a carrot. I think it needs to be faster than that. That's only a thousand RPM, that's probably suitable. As far as tooling goes, I normally use carbide tools for most things. This is my favourite tool, like a right, right hand knife tool. I'll use a power feed on it, run it quite a, quite a fast speed just to get the rough off it. That's putting quite a decent finish on. Try a slightly deeper cut. That's 
perfectly acceptable. All I do when I'll just part the ends off. As far as lubricant goes, carrots are basically self-lubricating, so you don't need to worry much about coating fluid. I'll slow it down a little bit for the parting off. That's better. Just feed this in by hand. I've got a nice section there and all I'll do I'll take a light cut across this piece and just face that end off as well. Pull that end off. And slow things down again. One thing when you're parting off, once it starts to cut, you haven't got to be frightened, just keep winding the tool in. It's when you back off, that's when you get the problems with the tool snatching and tools breaking. I'll just put a nice 45 degree chamfer on the sharp edges now. So nobody gets a, a fingers cut. So the result was quite satisfactory. We've got a perfect cylinder, four and a quarter inches long by 1.1 inches diameter with a nice hole through the centre. And a smaller one, which is just under three quarters of an inch diameter, on 19 mil for the metric lads. I did do some carrots the ordinary way. So again, these are roughly roughly chopped up. I just use a conventional. Quite a nice tool that. Very well designed, it works well. Now I think if I try and use an ordinary knife I end up with a waste half a potato and I take too much off with the skin. Easiest way to cut a potato up is to put a flat on the bottom and you can feel like making chips. Next thing we need is some beef stock. I haven't got any beef stock. All I have got is some bovril. So I'll just use some of that. A couple of spoonfuls of bovril. You like bovril or you hate bovril. Personally, I like it. It makes a, it makes a nice drink. Just boil it, boiling water, bovril, in black pepper. Just dissolve it in roughly three quarters of a pint of boiling water. Right, that's what that's our beef stock. It's not what beef stock, it's ordinary beef stock. Our beef stock. A decent knob of butter in a big frying pan. Two tablespoons spoonfuls of olive oil, virgin olive oil, good stuff. A teaspoon full of salt. Not that much. A teaspoonful of ordinary plain white sugar. It's melted. A 
make sure you don't burn the butter right into there I love the chopped onions they cook off for approximately 10 minutes until they start to caramelise these are coming on nice and nice, nice now that start to soften start to change colour slightly lovely smell of butter Okay, they're nicely cooked off now and caramelised. We'll turn the heat off into that we add one tablespoonful of plain flour. Stir that in. And the heat's turned off now. Right, now we'll add the rest of the vegetables and the stock. All the vegetables. And the beef stock. That's one extra ingredient to go in here, and that's what we call broom sauce. I'll show you what broom sauce is now. In the part of the world where I come from, there's basically two types of sauce. We've got broom sauce and reed sauce. Reed sauce is made from tomatoes and broom sauce is made from broom things I suppose. I think it's probably called ketchup in America. It actually says on there, tomato ketchup, established 1969, Heinz tomato ketchup, red sauce. This is Daddy's broom sauce. So into the mix we'll put one tablespoonful of broom sauce. We'll let this simmer for about 20-25 minutes until the vegetables are nicely softened. When this is simmering, we'll prepare the potatoes or the tetties. I'll probably need two to three potatoes of a decent size. The bigger the better actually. These are good quality potatoes. This is a splendid device this. I don't like it's a good I like to see a tool that can do its job and this just just does its job. It's probably taking a maybe a 40 thou shaving off in each cut. When you get a stubborn bit you can just do that. These need to be cut in a nice thin slices. Slices probably 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, no thicker than quarter. Sort of between 3 and 6 millimetres. Like thick crisps. Do some that way, we can do some this way as well. This is the meat part of the dish. Corn, it's pure and simple corned beef. If you put the corned beef in the fridge for a couple of hours before you use it, it makes it cut much easier. Corned beefs had the same type of fastener on for as long as I can remember. It always works, but one thing it does do is leave a real nasty sharp edge on the tin. That's really sharp there, so you need to be very careful. Out of the tin. It's clever the way it's done. The tin's actually tapered, so it comes out. It's a bit like 
a pattern when you're casting, you put draft on a pattern so it comes out of the molding sand. So your corn beef's got draft on. If I was going to cast that, that would be how much draft I would probably put on the pattern. I just thought you might like to know that. And anyway, we'll slice this up into roughly half inch thick slices. You can do a lot with a tin of corned beef, there's various meals you can make with it, as well as making nice sandwiches. Right, so we've got one tin of corned beef chopped up like that. The vegetables have been simmering away for roughly half an hour now, they're, they're cooked and nice and soft. And all the vegetables are now transferred into an oven proof glass dish or a metal dish. This is a Pyrex dish. You know, if Dave watches this I haven't burnt the pan. Into that goes the corned beef. Stir up. Right on top of that, we'll put a layer of the sliced potatoes or the titties. We'll have a lot them. I like to put two layers on. You could put butter on top of here, you could put cheese on top of there, anything you want really. I'm just going to let them go the way they are. In fact what I'll do, I'll put a little bit of olive oil on. Just a little, little drizzle of olive oil. Right, then that goes into the oven. Bollocks man. In the middle of the oven, 180 degrees to 200 degrees for roughly 20-25 minutes. Just have a quick look and see what's doing. It's been in there for 20 minutes now. See how it's starting to, they're starting to go nice and brown and crispy. We'll just turn it round. In about 10 minutes and that's going to be done. I think we should be about done now, it's had 35 minutes in there. Yeah, that looks lovely. This certainly looks nice and smells nice. garnish with a small amount of parsley but I haven't got any so it's just going to be eaten the way it is once again I'd just like to say bon appetit bonnie lad and that is absolutely absolutely gorgeous I like a crunchy, like a black bit, so crunchy bit's the best. <laughs>